Hi, this is God Sham God. And I'm Jose. And this is Talk to God. This is God Sham God. I'm here with my brother, Harrison Barnes, and Jose. We're here on Talk to God. So, happy to have you here, my brother. Appreciate it, man. Glad to be here. Yeah. Just for the people that don't know you, like the new viewers and the young kids and stuff like that, tell them like how you started playing basketball and things like that. So, man, so my mom was a huge NBA fan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, used to always record games, mm -hmm. um, always kept them. So growing up, we were just always watching basketball. You know, on Sundays, it was always whatever the primetime ABC game was. You know, during the week, I was watching the recordings. And mm -hmm. then the elementary school I went to was right up the street. It was outdoor court. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how I learned and started playing basketball, just watching those guys on tape, you know, whether it was Jordan, AI, whoever it may be, um, Kobe then trying to go out and replicate those moves. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with the game from there. Yeah, um, so when you was coming up, your, uh, your favorite player was who? So my favorite player um, that I watched was probably Michael Jordan. But the best, my favorite current player at that time was Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. And um, so did your like high school coach or AAU coach had the like biggest influence on you playing basketball? Man, it was actually my uh, my fifth grade AAU coach. Um, the first time I started playing AAU, you know, he just helped me see the difference between mm -hmm. just going out there and just enjoying playing versus mm -hmm. like putting in the work and the effort to try to try to make it something. You know, it wasn't just oh, you're taller than someone, you're bigger than somebody, stronger than somebody. You know, you feel like the game owes you something. You know, you got to mm -hmm. go and put the work in every day, have the discipline, and, and kind of go from there. Um, when, did, when did you realize? that you could take this to another level and uh, make a living doing this or going to Division One basketball. How did North Carolina, North Carolina influence you today? Yeah, yeah I mean, <coughs> you know, probably my, my sophomore year, that's when I kind of got noticed after my okay. sophomore year, went to a camp, Nike Hoop Jamboree. Okay. Kind of started getting some attention from there. And in my junior year, uh, when more college coaches started coming, talking to us, showing interest, kind of hearing that, you know, I may have the opportunity to leave school early. That's when I was like, wow. okay, you know, I might have the opportunity to like, to do this for a living, you know, full time. Okay. So you picking a North Carolina, cause you know, North Carolina is a school that's known for like, they get good, they get great players, but they kind of not hold them back, but it's like, <laughs> it's a whole team thing. And I know you had other schools where you could just go there and beat a man and take all the mm -hmm. shots. So in that point in time, like, how did you make your decision for, kids that's listening and trying to, you know, make decisions on college? You know, what I try to do and the advice I would give anyone who would ask is, you know, you have to go where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, North Carolina for me felt comfortable just because I knew the guys who I was going to be playing with. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be a good team. I knew we had mm -hmm. a chance potentially to win a national championship and you playing on, you know, that big stage. Mm -hmm. and, you know, as a competitor, you want to play against the best people every single night. You knew that, you know, couple miles up the road, you know, was a really good basketball team. You knew about those other teams in the division that were good teams. So I just wanted to be a part of that that culture, that legacy, that that basketball really uh, nation that's down there mm -hmm. in North Carolina and to really just be a part of that. What was the rivalries like against you, your team against Duke team? Because I know wow. that's like a big rivalry and y'all wow. so close together. And, you know, and some of the great players that y'all had and some of the great players that they had. Man, the rivalry games were nuts. Um, I remember my first time playing in it. Uh, you know, they were like, oh, you know, pregame, because we played at Cameron. Mm -hmm. It was like pregame, you know, it's going to be loud. So you might want to put some headphones on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you know, ain't, you know only 9,000 people, you know, it ain't going to be that loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you do your little pregame shots, and I put my headphones on. It's kind of kind of rocking there a little bit, so I kind of turn it up. Man, I had the, my headphones on full blast. And you, all you hear was the students, the fans, everyone going crazy. You go make an inbounds pass, fans just screaming almost on top of you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and it was it was a crazy environment. So just like playing at Cameron, playing at the Dean Dome, mm -hmm. having those games. You know, as a college player, you never kind of kind of been on that stage before. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so to be, have that next day, everybody blow up your phone, win or lose, like. Y'all was watching the game last night. It was crazy. You know, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was nuts to see. So you, do you, do you feel like that environment helped you? Because you played in the finals. Yeah. Did you think that helped you prepare yourself for that in the NBA? I think that was that was the, the closest thing to just having, having that NBA experience. Outside of the tournament, of course. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. um, just kind of having all that attention, you know, having two good teams because, you know, every year we were, you know, one and two in yes. ACC, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get to the division championship. Who was going to be a number one seed in the tournament? So there was always so much that was on the line in those games. And just being able to play at a high level, I think that was that was a, a fun thing as a competitor. And I know when you went to North Carolina, like, it was a lot of people that said, oh, you know, Harrison Barnes could be one and done and things like that. How did you make your choice to stay or just to come out and test the waters? Because we have so many kids coming out of school now, mm -hmm. especially with the whole G League and things that's going on now. People take more chances now than back in the days. How did you factor in your choices? So after my freshman year, we lost in the Elite Eight. Uh, we come back to Chapel Hill. We sit down with Coach Williams, uh, kind of just talk about, you know, what he has heard from scouts and GMs, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But for me, I just felt that, one, I just wanted another year to just mature as a person. Mm -hmm. And I realized mm -hmm. that, you know, the NBA is a business. You know, if you're, yeah. a, if you're a fan of the game and you've mm -hmm. seen different things, you understand that, you know, once you become a professional, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's every, nothing's off limits. I mean, you know, crazy things can happen. So I just wanted another year just as a person to just mature, make sure I was ready for that step. Uh, but also too, you know, it was the lockout was happening. Mm -hmm. We felt like we had a good team. You know, we want to try to come back, you know, we try to try to win a national championship. Injuries, you know, kind of prevented that, but yeah. you know, that's, that was the biggest thing that factored in my decision. And then, then when you did come out in the draft, you came in like such a good draft class, like Golden State was okay, but then you come in there and you got you, Clay Thompson, Draymond, like, how was, how was those days, like, rookie orientation, practicing to be in such a great class? Man, it was crazy. Um, you know, when you think about the team, where it is today versus, like, you know, they had the number seven pick. You know, you had Steph, Clay. My draft class was me, Draymond, Festus, Azili, mm -hmm. and Kent Bazemore. Okay. Uh, you had Andrew Bogut. You had David Lee, you know, who was going to become an all-star my rookie year. Mm -hmm. You had all these guys, you're like, man, how did this team get the seventh pick? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's nuts, you know, to go from that to all of a sudden we in the second round in the playoffs. It was crazy. And you just look at everyone's growth. You know, you look at Clay's growth. You look at Steph's growth. Um, Draymond, Kent, and all these different people who, as their careers have gone on, uh, have gotten so much better since that time. It's been crazy. I got to ask them this question. How do you feel when you watch Klay Thompson being their teammate and Steph Curry shoot the ball, man? It goes in all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> man. Do you find yourself going, wow? You know, I would probably say my, my rookie year, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely was like, man, these, these just be shooting some crazy shots, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how, how does this work? Yeah. But then you, you see them, you know, behind the scenes, you know, all the work that they put in every single day. Okay. You know, the shooting that they do at the rate that they do, you know what I'm saying? Putting on that Incredible, time. Man. Then when they come in the game, you see, you know, a guy make 11 threes or a guy get- You see the work that they did to yeah. be able to do that. Yeah, score 50 points in the game. You see that and it's like, okay, you know, that's, it doesn't happen just, oh, he got hot. It's like, no, he, he puts in the time and work okay. to get to that point. So when you first got in the NBA, what was the first thing you bought with your first check? The first thing I bought with my first check, uh, well, I took care of all my, my mom's debt. That was, that, was, that was the first thing. Wow. Um, but then I went out and bought you know, the nicest mattress I could buy, man. In college, man, you had, you had, you had the smallest small beds. And, and I was like, you know, we, we made it. You know what I'm saying? It's time to start sleeping like we made it. <laughs> so when you, when you just look at the class that you was in, and then how, how was it in the championship run, you know, that y'all put on? that year and stuff like that? It was crazy. I mean, you know, the year before we lost game seven, Clippers, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of the year before we went to the second round, that year we went to the first. So we're kind of in that situation of, man, how do we get better? You know, mm -hmm. this was, you know, a rivalry that we had and we felt like we should have beat them, didn't. Coaching change happens. And I remember I was on the phone talking to Coach Kerr and he's like, yo, I think we can be in the Western Conference Finals next year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Yo, you might be crazy, man. Like you never coached. I'm like, you never coached before. Like we just lost in the first round. Like, how do you expect us to make that jump? He's like, no, nah, I feel like we have all the pieces. Mm -hmm. and we just have to just tweak a few things. And then just to see like that next year, the most important thing was the buy-in from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when you have a new coach, you know, getting yeah. buying into a new system, playing a different way, kind of having that freedom, but then just kind of like seeing the wins accumulate. Okay. 
seeing as you rise in the standings, like, okay, this might be for real. And then like going through the playoffs, just the run that the run that happened that started the dynasty it was it was crazy. Yeah, and then um so you you know, you win you win the championship, then the next year, you know, you start going over contracts, things like that. And then you be, you come up to be for a max player and things like that. How do you make choices on stay, leave and things like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you go into a contract negotiation, you kinda have to have a realistic mindset of, mm -hmm. you know, what you believe you can do, what you believe you can contribute to a team and mm -hmm. um you know, it was tough. My very first time, you know, we come up on a championship, you know, we had contract negotiations and, you know, I just decided to play it out. You know, I, mm -hmm. you know, I had friends, family, even some teammates was like, yo, what are you doing? Like, you took crazy. a chance on yourself, man. Yeah, you got it. I bet it on myself. And, you know, the biggest thing about that was, you know, look, we have a great team. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a chance to do something special. Let's just worry about that. The contract, everything like that. It'll worry about itself. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. You know, whatever happens mm -hmm. is going to happen. And we just go from there. And you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to come out of that um, financially better. Unfortunately, we weren't able to win a championship that year. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think that in itself is if you have the belief in yourself and you just, like I said, realistically know what you can and can't get on the open market, then I think that dictates, you know, staying versus leaving. So for young kids that look up to you and things like that, what would you tell them the most important thing is when it comes to basketball? Training, playing, a mixture of both, or like what would, you, what would be the best advice you would give them if they're trying to become an NBA player and things like that? Look at the camera, too, so the kid can see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one over here. Uh, biggest advice I can give you is it's all about confidence. No matter how much time in the gym you put, no matter how many pickup games you play, uh, when you step in, in those, between those lines to go out there and play, the confidence you have in yourself, the confidence you have in the work that you put in, is ultimately going to carry you through the day. And you know, me and being with the Mavs and getting there when you was there, you know, one of the biggest things I learned from you how humble you are, and how hard you work, and how family oriented you are, and things like that. So how do you stay level-headed, you know, being the success that you have? Like, you know, at this time, you almost got two max contracts, you know, you're still young and things like that. How do you just stay grounded? I mean, my, my faith, I mean, that, that's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, it's always easy to, to be on this side and mm -hmm. to be like, man, you know, so many good things have happened. You mm -hmm. know, how do you stay humble? But it's like, I remember the times when, you know, I first got to Carolina and I was, struggling like, <laughs> you know those first you know 10 15 games it was like yo this dude might not even get drafted mm -hmm. to you know my second year like playing in the tournament we lose they're like oh you know your stock has dropped x y and z to coming off the bench my second year in the league so you look at all these times where you're like yo man how did i get through these you know those mm -hmm. moments those those dark days you know when things just you know weren't clicking weren't going right and it was it was just my faith in god and now, and now, fast forward, you were Sacramento Kings. You know, you got a, a great young nucleus. Nice exciting team, man. A lot of running. There. You know, <laughs> yeah. You still, you still young, but you're a vet. You know, and things like that. And you got, you know, a great player like Fox. You know, and Marvin Bagley and players like that, Harry Giles. How do you try to make them see the big picture instead of, you know, because we live in a world of everybody want everything now for themselves. How do you get them to a point where, you know, how you had it at Golden State? Yeah, I mean, it's just having that mentality of, you know, we have the ability to do something special. You mm -hmm. know, when you look at the jump that Fox made last year, when you look mm -hmm. at the way that Marvin played his rookie year, when you look at the strides that Buddy took, mm -hmm. you know, Harry, Giles becoming more healthy, Bogdanovich, the way he's playing, it's like, man, if you look around and step outside of yourself, you're like, man, this is a great situation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you get stuck in the comparison trap of, looking at this guy, looking at that guy, and, you know, oh, their situation looks better than here, why can't I do that? Mm -hmm. Then that's when, that's when you can't quite get to your full potential. And I think if we as a group kind of have that buy-in that, yo, we, we have a chance to, you know, do something special, not only this year, but keep this group together for, you know, two, three, four years, whatever it may be, you know, think good things can happen. And you know what's crazy? They're going to look at you for advice because you have that <coughs> You're still young, but you're older than them, so they're going to come to you. No question. And, you know, I definitely, I welcome that. You know, I try to, anytime they ask questions, anytime they want to get in the gym, you know, that's, that's what I'm about. So, you know, anything I can do to try to help their development, you know, I'm all for it. 
And as you know, it's, this has been the first year. It's been like a hectic free agent year. So how do you see the West shaping up and the things that, you know, like Kawhi crazy, did, man. the Lakers it's just did, crazy. and things like that? How do you see, you know, the things shaping up in the West this year? I mean, you know, it sounds like a broken record, but every year the West, you know, keeps getting tougher and tougher. Mm -hmm. You know, you got more guys coming in, um, you know, more talent teams stacking up. And I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing is going to be, you know, continuity and health. You know, with all these new additions, with every these, all these teams changing, you know, who can come together the fastest, mm -hmm. and who can, you know, have, have the healthiest run. Because ultimately, uh, you know, depth is super important, but as we saw in the finals, I mean, if you're not healthy, it's hard to, it's hard to win. I mean, you, you was coming up in the AAU circuit. Who, who are some of the, well, who is the one player that probably surprised you the most that probably made it to the NBA? Surprised me the most? Or surprised you the most. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think when you look at Victor Oladipo, his development, kind of just seeing him on the circuit mm -hmm. and then just as time went on, you know, for him to be able to go from that to the all-star player that he mm -hmm. is, you know, come back from injury, going to get back in all-star form, I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the biggest jumps that I saw from a player. And who was the toughest player you ever played against in the NBA? Or, or college, somebody, somebody we don't know about, or like I said, NBA, it could be an NBA. Man, my rookie, my rookie year, um, between probably like, Kobe, KD, and, and uh, Melo. <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> a hard ISO. That was a three tough guy. Hard ISO. Man, I was like, dang. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think the first time Kobe came to Golden State, I think he had like 40. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think KD had like a triple double. Uh, <laughs> I think Mello, we played Melo in the garden and he, he just went off. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's. <laughs> That's definitely, uh, those are my rookie year, those are probably the three toughest checks. Who in the NBA just don't shut up and just talk trash, trash, and it's never quiet? Man, it's, nowadays it's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of my younger guys, too. Um, but no, nah, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, that just, that just increases you know, okay. the competitiveness. Competitiveness, okay. Yeah, and, you know, me and you grew to be brothers and things like that, and we both have you know, a special relationship with Kobe Bryant. What would you tell some kids what makes him that special? I mean, just just the work that he puts in. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they go to the gym, they work out, they leave, and then their, their mind is not even thinking about basketball. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A great player, you know, probably goes to the gym, thinks about it, you know, watch some tape. I mean, Kobe, like, lives yeah. basketball. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, his dedication to the craft, made him the player that he was. So I think you know, that's just the mentality in terms of people say, oh, I want to get to that level. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, if you want to get to that level, like there's, there's a lot of sacrifices yeah. that, that <laughs> go into it to get to that point, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially like, you know, from high school to college to NBA, to obviously, you know, all time great. You know, those are all the, all the steps that you have to do to get there. And, you know, me knowing you and growing with you, it's so much stuff that you do besides basketball, like for the community and things like that. Where did that, you know, come from and, you know, just doing it so much, you know, I respect your efforts in helping the community and things like that, but where did it all like, like come from? So when my, me and my sister were younger, uh, my mom had this nonprofit. It was called mm -hmm. Suited for Work Clothing Closet. And pretty much if you didn't have a job, they would give you clothes to go mm -hmm. do job interviews. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you got the job, they'd give you like two or three outfits and you could go from there. So my sister and I would always have to be there when mm -hmm. they would change out the seasons. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, why are we giving all, like, we could use some of these clothes. Like, why are we over here doing all this type of stuff? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you see the people that come in and they talk about like, man, you know, with what you guys have done in my life, X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. you hear those stories and you're like, man, you know, we don't even have a whole lot, mm -hmm. but my mom was able to make an impact on other people's lives in that way. And it wow. was like, man, if I can ever, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't do this. But if I could do something where yeah, I could, yeah. you know, help people out and affect them, mm -hmm. you know, that would be that would be great. And after basketball, you know, years from now, because you're gonna have a long career, all star things like that. What do you see yourself doing? Man, you know, as of right now, I think it's gonna be something uh, philanthropy based. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been fortunate enough to make 
make a make a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. playing the game of basketball, but to be able to, you know, help kids out, you know, especially, you know, with literacy programs, you know, in underserved, underprivileged communities, I think that's mm -hmm. something that I've done, you know, this this first seven years of my career and hopefully continue to do, but for sure it's something I'll do afterwards. Well, this is God Shamgod and Harrison Barnes and oh, Jose. Man. And this is Talk with God. I just want to thank my brother for coming Thanks through. For coming out, man. Future All-Star, they're gonna have a great season. <laughs> And he's going to do great things next year. Yeah.